the Museo Nacional de Historia in Castillo de Chapultepec, Mexico. We are looking at Miguel Cabrera's portrait of Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz. The subject of this painting is Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz, a well-known Mexican nun and writer. What's really interesting about Sor Juana is that instead of following societal norms and deciding to marry, she chose to become a nun in the Geronimite order. She wanted to pursue her interests that included literature, science, and music. For women during that time in history, she really was a progressive figure and known for her great intellect. In fact, today she is considered the first American feminist by many. And it's understandable why. She's notable for stepping out of the boundaries set for Mexican women at the time. Even though she found great success as a writer, the church forced her to give up her writing in the library that she had accumulated over her career because of the restrictions on women, especially nuns. But soon afterwards, in 1695, she unfortunately passed away while taking care of victims of an epidemic. So Cabrera painted this oil painting on canvas about a half century after her death in 1750. Having never really actually met Sor Juana, Cabrera based his depiction of her on other portraits of her. Many historians even claim that the way that Cabrera chose to pose Sor Juana mimics a number of paintings of male scholars at their desk. He was also probably influenced by St. Jerome, the patron saint of the Jeromic order. Pictures of St. Jerome frequently depict the saint seated at a desk in his study, <laughs> surrounded by books and other instruments of learning. Here is an unfinished oil painting by Jan van Eck, an early painter from the Netherlands from 1444. Located now in the Detroit Institute of Arts, the painting shows the traditional depiction of St. Jerome in his study reading a book. It really has a certain closeness to that of Cabrera's portrait of Sor Juana, don't you agree? I really do see that too. If you look at Sor Juana's neck, you can see that she's wearing the traditional nun habit with an escudo de mona, or nun's badge. Her escudo shows the Annunciation. The Annunciation is the time when the Archangel Gabriel is telling Mary that she will give birth to the Son of God. Her left hand holds onto a rosary while she's turning the page of a book with her right hand, which is actually written by St. Jerome himself. The way Cabrera chose to depict Sor Juana sharply contrasts with the, new, the usual nun portrait of this time. She looks at the viewer in such a bold light. It almost feels like she's looking at you if you look at her long enough. If you look closely at the types of books in her library, they include titles that correlate to the topics of philosophy, natural, nat natural science, theology, mythology, and history. On the table there are what looks like writing utensils, alluding to Sor Juana's writing. The rosary and other religious accessories symbolizing her devotion to her religion are juxtaposed with books, desks, quills, and ink inkwell, which symbolize her intellect. The red curtain, seen in the right, top right corner of the painting, is a common attribute to portraits of the elite during this period, creating a direct comparison between her and the elite. Looking back at it, Sor Juana was revolutionary for her time. Studying science, joining a convent, she went against what Mexican women of that time were supposed to do.